I'm going to be talking about the ruptured anterior cruciated ligament in dogs, or otherwise known as an ACL tear. Um, what, is, what is an ACL? It is the part of the stifle joint, which is the equivalent to a human knee, and it is made up of three bones, femur, tibia, and patella. Um, ACL tears are the most common knee injury, and it is the most common uh, injured ligament in dogs. Um, so the stifle is joined by several ligaments, but the two main ones are the crisscross ligaments that are the joint from the femur to the tibia, and these are called the cruciated ligaments, and they prevent the end of the femur and tibia from moving back and forth across from each other. Um, it's, and the ACL is used for stabilizing the hind leg when the dog is bending, stretching, rotating, so a lot of common movements. Uh, all dogs are susceptible to having ACL tears, but larger dogs such as Newfoundlands, uh, Labrador Retrievers, Rottweilers, and such are more common. Um, also more common as dogs get older because just general deterioration of the uh, ligament itself at age. Uh, obese dogs, weight has a lot of bearing since you're putting more weight on the ligament as the heavier your dog gets. And if your dog does occasional strenuous exercises, such as if it's an adult dog most of the week, but then it goes out and does running and stuff during the weekend because that's when we have time to take it out. And it is most common in spade females. I don't know why spade specifically, mm. but... Interesting. Um, I know that my dog that had a ruptured ACL was a spade female dog, and dogs that have a ruptured ACL on one leg are more common I have about a 50% chance of getting it the other, which happened to my dog. Wow. Um, it might have something to do with hormones, like estrogen might make those ligaments more flexible or supple. I don't know. That's possible. interesting. Um, so what causes an ACL, ACL tear? Um, the fiber, it's quite literally the fibrous connective tissues in the cruciated ligaments begin to actually tear apart or completely sever. Um, when this happens, the joint loses stability and the femurs and tibia can move back and forth from each other. And it's commonly caused by, again, general things such as if the hind leg is twisted, uh, if there's too much weight on it, uh, slipping on slippery surfaces, because that can hurt a human knee as well, uh, sudden turns while running, landing wrong from a jump, which is actually what happened to my dog the first time, and just repetitive micro injuries. And it most commonly happens from slow deterioration of the ACL, jo ACL joint over time, which is kind of where the micro injuries come in. Uh, there's not a whole lot of symptoms, but uh, there is some, such as lameness, the dog will not want to put any weight on it at all. Um, there will be swelling, they'll probably be in some pain and stiffness. They will limp around or not, and um, depending on if it's a partial or a complete tear is how bad they will limp or lameness. And uh, you, you, if you're around when it happens, you may hear a sudden popping noise upon the rupture, which if you hear a popping noise, you <laughs> save your dog to That's the always bad. Yeah. Um, the diagnosis is usually made through observing abnormal movements in the joint, and this is usually called a drawer sign test and it is where the vet holds down the femur in place and tries to move the tibia forward. And if the tibia can move forward, it'll move kind of in a drawer-like motion where it opens and closes, kind of like if you're pulling a cabinet. Um, they will also do radiographs to assess the amount of arthritis because if you rupture the ligament, it is the bones rubbing against bones. So that causes arthritis. Um, they will also use an arthroscopy to visualize the ligaments and cartil cartilage. Um, if there is a lot of fluid, they might puncture to remove that to, make, to get it back to a normal pressure to check it. And uh, they will also do x-rays to see the extent of the damage, which is actually how we learned my dog had an ACL tear. Um, and it can, like I said, it can be a partial or a complete tear. And it's possible that when it breaks, pieces of bone might also snap off a little bit as well, so they're also looking for that. Treatment is, ge it's generally treated with surgery because the ligaments cannot heal on their own, and it is expensive, especially mm -hmm. when you go from one leg to the other. 
Um, there are several types of surgery. There's the extracapillary lateral suture stabilization, which is the most common surgery. Um, it's generally recommended for dogs over 50 pounds, but they do do it on dogs over 50 pounds. It is also the cheapest surgery, and it's uh, using a single fiber plastic line called the microfilament, and it's placed in the orientation of the original uh, ligament. So that's how they fix it. They just put a piece of plastic in, basically. Um, hence why it is the cheapest one. The tibial plateau leveling osteotomy, or the TPLO, is the most expensive surgery and it, a, one of the more common ones when your dog is over 50 pounds. And it is taking a portion of the tibia and cutting it, moving it, and then reattaching it to a different tibia portion using plates and screws. Um, it's extremely expensive because it is extremely difficult to do. It's a very smaller surgery you have to do, and you have to have a lot of specialized tools to do it. Um, the tibial to Tuberosity advancement is the, kind of the middle range, and it's very similar to the TPLO. Um, it just has a, it, it's placed in a different spot, it's a different portion of the bone getting cut off. And it's also, they're, they're focusing on fixing different parts. The TTA is usually focusing more on stabilizing than the TPLO. Um, if not treated, it'll cause severe arthritis and uh, dogs will need to be put on a diet because putting weight on that is painful and will probably tear the other knee. And uh, you may be, it may be prescribed anti-inflammatory and pain medicines for the swelling and any pain it might have during uh, the after treatments. And this was just a nice little thing I found that told you, that had it more organized than most places. Uh, dogs less than 33 pounds can usually be done outpatient. Dogs over 33 pounds usually require stabilization surgery, and it takes about, and both of them take about six months to be walking normally. Um, physical therapy and ice packs after surgery to make sure that, you know, the dog isn't in pain, weight control, stabilization. Um, after treatment, uh, dogs will need to be monitored constantly, and it'll be a minimal of two weeks uh, it'll be about two weeks of absolutely minimal movement um, and also making sure they're not licking their stitches because if they do that, you will have to take them back to the vet and that is another cost. And it sounds that, like uh, something that happened to you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the, this dog here is actually the dog that had both her ACLs replaced. Okay. Her name is Cola mm -hmm. and uh, she did not like having stitches in her legs so right. she would lick at them. Um, uh, four to six weeks, it's restricted to activity and leash walking only, so they will be, uh, when you take them out to go to the bathroom and whatever else, they need to be on a leash so that they're not running ahead, moving. At eight to 12 weeks, they may do low impact exercises, such as swimming or walking on a controlled basis. Um, Cola loved to be in the pool, so we would have her float and then we would make her swim a little bit every time. Um, this is done to keep the muscle strength up so that, you know, when they start walking on it normally again, it's not a weird overcompensation on the other leg, which is what causes the second tear. Um, and during this period, they cannot go up and down stairs or into cars and stuff without supervision. And uh, usually if you have a smaller dog, you can just pick them up. But a 50 pound mud is a little bit harder to pick up. So we actually, and it's, you can use a towel, but you can get a nice sling to put it around their abdomen and, and you can just hold it up and help them balance so that they're, when they're stepping, they're not putting a bunch of weight on their back legs. And usually dogs recover very well um, as long as you follow the restricted exercise and or weight loss. Um, obviously watch for tearing the other leg because they will be overcompensating quite and put more pressure on that. Um, there is a 10 to 15% chance you will need a second surgery because of damage to the meniscus, which is another piece of cartilage in the knee, but that surgery has an 85% success rate, so it's not really a huge concern. And just general things to help dogs after having a torn ACL is uh, using ramps for beds in and out of cars. I know my dad made stairs so my dog can get up to the my parents' bed where she normally slept. Um, soft bedding because they're going to be in pain and they don't like being on hardwood floors. 
and uh, putting down rugs and carpets and slippery surfaces. And I wish I had a picture of it. Um, our kitchen is hardwood floor. And after the dog had surgery, we bought like six or seven really big rugs mm -hmm. and just laid them all and over made our a kitchen. Path for the dog. Yep. Uh, well, she liked laying in the kitchen because it had oh. an air vent and she was a very big furry dog. So, and it's, it really does help because they do not have the balance after yeah. that. Very good. Now, what's the, um, I know it's ACL, and you use ACL because it equates to the human population, but a lot of times you tend not to use anterior or posterior when you're talking about quadrupeds. What's the more correct term? Uh, I forget the term. I was reading it a bunch. It's, I know it's CCL. And yeah, actually, CCL. What's the first C stand for? Okay, yeah. So this is a take-home message. It stands for cranial because when you talk about dogs or cats, it's hard to, it's bad to say anterior versus posterior. For primates like us, it's easy anterior. So that's where if a, somebody has an ACL, that's why you say it. But for a dog, it's more proper to say CCL. I actually use ACL because that is when we had been taking her back and forth from yeah. the vet and stuff. That is the term that they use. Yeah, 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 and they use it so you can identify yeah. what what's really going. But it's more proper to say CCL. But then you have to explain why do you not say anterior. Yeah. And uh, when you're doing a 